common bond, buying mistakes. Key takeaways. Bonds and other fixed income investments are often portrayed as more conservative and less risky than stocks. Nonetheless, investors can make costly mistakes when trading the bond market. That can easily be avoided. Here, we go over seven common pitfalls, from ignoring interest rate changes to failing to one's due diligence on the bond issuer. Bond Basics Debt instruments include fixed and variable bonds, debentures, notes, certificate of deposit, and bills. These products are used by governments and companies to raise funds to finance activities and projects. Debt securities can take many forms. Some can offer a high rate of return, but the holder must also assume elevated risks. Those who issue bonds are known as issuers and the investor who buys the bond is the bondholder. Bondholders act as a lender and will receive an interest payment for loaning money. The seller of the security promises to repay the lender at a future maturity date. Other important features of debt securities include coupon rate, the rate of interest to be paid on the bond, maturity date, the date at which the security will be redeemed, call provisions, the outline of options the company may have to buy back the debt at a later date, call information. This is particularly important to know because of the numerous pitfalls that can be associated with this feature. For example, suppose interest rates decline sharply after you purchase the bond. The good news is that the price of your holding will increase. The bad news is that the company that issued the debt may now be able to go into the market, float another bond and raise money at a lower interest rate, and then use the proceeds to buy back or call your bond. Typically, the company will offer you a small premium to sell the note back to them before maturity. But where does that leave you? After your bond is called, you may owe a big tax liability on your gains and you will probably be forced to reinvest the money you received at the prevailing market rate, which may have declined since your initial investment. 1. Ignoring interest rate moves Interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship. As rates go up, bond prices decline and vice versa. This means that in the period before a bond's redemption on its maturity date, the price of the issue will vary widely as interest rates fluctuate. Many investors don't realize this. Is there a way to protect against such price volatility? The answer is no. The volatility is inevitable. For this reason, fixed. Income investors, regardless of the length of the maturity of the bonds they hold, should be prepared to maintain their positions until the actual date of redemption. If you have to sell the bond before maturity, you may end up doing so at a loss if the interest rate has moved against you. For more insight, see What are the risks of investing in a bond? 2. Not noting the claim status. Not all bonds are created equal. There are senior notes, which are often backed by collateral, such as equipment, that are given the first claim to company asset in case of bankruptcy and liquidation. There are also subordinated debentures, which still rank ahead of common stock in terms of claim preference, but below that of the senior debt holder. It is important to understand which type of debt you own, especially if the issue you're buying is in any way speculative. In the event of bankruptcy, Bond investors have the first claim to a company's assets. In other words, at least theoretically, they have a better chance of being made whole if the underlying company goes out of business. To determine what type of bond you own, check the certificate if possible. It will likely say the words senior note or indicate the bond status in some other fashion on the document. Alternatively, the broker that sold you the note should be able to provide that information. If the bond is an initial issue, the investor can look at the underlying company's financial documents, such as the TIN or the prospectus. 3. Assuming a company is sound. Just because you own a bond or because it is highly regarded in the investment community doesn't guarantee that you will earn a dividend payment or that you will ever see the bond redeemed. In many ways, investors seem to take this process for granted. But rather than make the assumption that the investment is sound, the investor should review the company's financials and look for any reason it won't be able to service its obligation. They should look closely at the income statement and then take the annual net income figure and add back taxes, depreciation, and any other non-cash charges. This will help you to determine how many times that figure exceeds the annual debt service number. Ideally, there should be at least two times coverage in order to feel comfortable that the company will have the ability to pay down its debt. To learn how to read and break down financial statements, see what you need to know about financial statements. 4. Misjudging market perception. As mentioned above, bond prices can and do fluctuate. 
One of the biggest sources of volatility is the market's perception of the issue and the issuer. If other investors don't like the issue, or think the company won't be able to meet its obligations, or if the issuer suffers a blow to its reputation, the price of the bond will decrease in value. The opposite is true if Wall Street views the issuer or the issue favorably. A good tip for bond investors is to take a look at the issuer's common stock to see how it is being perceived. If it is disliked, or there is unfavorable research in the public domain on the equity, it will likely spill over and be reflected in the price of the bond as well. 5. Failing to check the history. It is important for an investor to look over old annual reports and review a company's past performance to determine whether it has a history of reporting consistent earnings. Verify that the company has made all interest, tax, and pension plan obligation payments in the past. Specifically, a potential investor should read the company's management discussion and analysis, MBTIA, section for this information. Also, read the proxy statement. It, too, will yield clues about any problems or a company's past inability to make payments. It may also indicate future risks that could have an adverse impact on a company's ability to meet its obligations or service its debt. The goal of this homework is to gain some level of comfort that the bond you are holding isn't some type of experiment. In other words, check that the company has paid its debts in the past and, based upon its past and expected future earnings, is likely to do so in the future. To learn more about management, see Evaluating a Company's Management and Get Tough on Management Puff. 6. Ignoring Inflation Trends When bond investors hear reports of inflation trends, they need to pay attention. Inflation can eat away a fixed income investor's future purchasing power quite easily. For example, if inflation is growing at an annual rate of 4%, this means that each year, it will take a 4% greater return to maintain the same purchasing power. This is important, particularly for investors that buy bonds at or below the rate of inflation, because they are actually guaranteeing they'll lose money when they purchase the security. Of course, this is not to say that an investor shouldn't buy a low-yielding bond from a highly rated corporation. But investors should understand that in order to defend against inflation, they must obtain a higher rate of return from other investments in their portfolio, such as common stocks or high-yielding bonds. To continue reading about inflation, see the importance of inflation and GDP. 7. Failing to check liquidity. Financial publications, market data, quote, services, brokers, and a company's website may provide information about the liquidity of the issue you hold. More specifically, one of these sources may yield information about what type of volume the bond trades on a daily basis. This is important because bondholders need to know that if they want to dispose of their position, adequate liquidity will ensure that there will be buyers in the market ready to assume it. Generally speaking, the stocks and bonds of large, well-financed companies tend to be more liquid than those of smaller companies. The reason for this is simple. Larger companies are perceived as having a greater ability to repay their debts. Is there a certain level of liquidity that is recommended? No. But if the issue is traded daily in large volumes, is being quoted by the large brokerage houses, and has a fairly narrow spread, it is probably suitable. The bottom line. Bonds, in general, are less risky and more conservative than stocks. But, contrary to popular belief, fixed income investing involves a great deal of research and analysis. Those who don't do their homework run the risk of suffering low or negative return, interest rate risk definition, and impact on bond prices. What is interest rate risk? Interest rate risk is the potential for investment losses that can be triggered by a move upward in the prevailing rates for new debt instruments. If interest rates rise, for instance, the value of a bond or other fixed, income investment in the secondary market will decline. The change in a bond's price given a change in interest rates is known as its duration. Interest rate risk can be reduced by buying bonds with different durations or by hedging fixed income investments with interest rate swaps, options, or other interest rate derivatives. Key Takeaways Interest rate risk is the potential that a change in overall interest rates will reduce the value of a bond or other fixed rate investment. As interest rates rise, bond prices fall, and vice versa. This means that the market price of existing bonds drops to offset the more attractive rates of new bond issues. Interest rate risk is measured by a fixed income securities duration, with longer-term bonds having a greater price sensitivity to rate changes. Interest rate risk can be reduced through diversification of bond maturities or hedged using interest rate derivatives. 
Interest rate risk. Understanding interest rate risk. Interest rate changes can affect many investments, but it impacts the value of bonds and other fixed income securities most directly. Bondholders, therefore, carefully monitor interest rates and make decisions based on how interest rates are perceived to change over time. For fixed income securities, as interest rates rise, security prices fall, and vice versa. This is because when interest rates increase, the opportunity cost of holding those bonds increases. That is, the cost of missing out on an even better investment is greater. The rates earned on bonds, therefore, have less appeal as rates rise. So if a bond paying a fixed rate of 5 is trading at its par value of $1,000 when prevailing interest rates are also at 5, it becomes far less attractive to earn that same 5 when rates elsewhere start to rise to, say, 6 or 7. In order to compensate for this economic disadvantage in the market, the value of these bonds must fall. Because who will want to own a fives interest rate when they can get seven with some different bonds? Therefore, for bonds that have a fixed rate, when interest rates rise to a point above that fixed level, investors switch to investments that reflect the higher interest rate. Securities that were issued before the interest rate change can compete with new issues only by dropping their prices. Interest rate risk can be managed through hedging or diversification strategies that reduce a portfolio's effective duration or negate the effect of rate changes. For more on this, see Managing Interest Rate Risk. Example of Interest Rate Risk For example, say an investor buys a 5-year $500 bond with a 3 coupon. Then, interest rates rise to 4. The investor will have trouble selling the bond when newer bond offerings with more attractive rates enter the market. The lower demand also triggers lower prices on the secondary market. The market value of the bond may drop below its original purchase price. The reverse is also true. A bond yielding a 5 return holds more value if interest rates decrease below this level since the bondholder receives a favorable fixed rate of return relative to the market. Bond Price Sensitivity the value of existing fixed income securities with different maturity dates declines by varying degrees when market interest rates rise. This phenomenon is referred to as price sensitivity and is measured by the bond's duration. For instance, suppose there are two fixed income securities, one that matures in one year and another that matures in 10 years. When market interest rates rise, the owner of the one-year security can reinvest in a higher rate security after hanging on to the bond with a lower return for only one year at most, but the owner of the 10-year security is stuck with a lower rate for nine more years. That justifies a lower price value for the longer-term security. The longer a security's time to maturity, the more its price declines relative to a given increase in interest rates. Note that this price sensitivity occurs at a decreasing rate. A 10-year bond is significantly more sensitive than a one-year bond. But a 20-year bond, but a 20-year bond is only slightly less sensitive than a 30-year one. The maturity risk premium. A long-term bond generally offers a maturity risk premium in the form of a higher built-in rate of return to compensate for the added risk of interest rate changes over time. The larger duration of longer-term securities means higher interest rate risk for those securities. To compensate investors for taking on more risk, the expected rates of return on longer, term securities are typically higher than rates on shorter-term securities. This is known as the maturity risk premium. Other risk premiums, such as default risk premiums and liquidity risk premiums, may determine rates offered on bonds. Hedge your bets with inflation-indexed bonds. Inflation can have a dampening effect on fixed income investments, reducing their purchasing power and cutting their real returns over time. This happens even if the inflation rate is relatively low. If you have a portfolio that returns 9s and the inflation rate is 3, then your real returns are about 6. Inflation Inflation index linked bonds can help to hedge against inflation risk because they increase in value during inflationary periods. Key takeaways Inflation index linked bonds can help to hedge against inflation risk because they increase in value during inflationary periods. The United States, India, Canada, and a wide range of other countries issue inflation-linked bonds. TIPS and many of their global inflation-linked counterparts do not offer very good protection during times of deflation. An additional upside of inflation-linked bonds is that their returns do not correlate with those of stocks or with other fixed-income assets. The United States, India, Canada, 
and a wide range of other countries issue inflation-linked bonds. Because they reduce uncertainty, inflation-indexed bonds are a popular long-range planning investment vehicle for individuals and institutions alike. How Inflation-Linked Bonds Work Inflation-linked bonds are tied to the costs of consumer goods as measured by an inflation index, such as the consumer price index, such as the consumer price index. PPI has its own method for calculating those costs on a regular basis. In addition, each nation has its own agency responsible for issuing inflation-linked bonds. In the United States, Treasury Inflation, Protected Securities, TIPS, and Inflation, Indexed Savings Bonds, I-Bonds, are tied to the value of the U.S. Treasury and sold by the U.S. Treasury. In the United Kingdom, inflation-linked gilts are issued by the U.K. Debt Management Office and linked to that country's retail price index, PIE. The Bank of Canada issues that nation's real return bonds, while Indian inflation, indexed bonds are issued through the Reserve Bank of India, Rabia. In general, the outstanding principle of the bond rises with inflation for inflation-linked bonds. So the face or pair value of the bond increases when inflation occurs. This is in contrast to other types of securities, which often decrease in value when inflation rises. The interest paid out by the bonds is also adjusted for inflation. By providing these features, inflation-linked bonds can soften the real impact of inflation on the holder of the bonds. Risks of inflation-linked bonds While inflation-linked bonds have considerable upside potential, they also possess certain risks. Their value also tends to fluctuate with the rise and fall of interest rates, tips, and many of their global inflation. Linked counterparts do not offer very good protection during times of deflation. The U.S. Treasury sets an initial floor for tips at par value. However, the risk is still considerable because there are older tips issues carrying years of inflation, adjusted accruals, which can be lost to deflation. This deflation risk caused tips to underperform other treasury bonds during 2008. Tips also present complications in trading and taxation that don't affect other fixed other fixed income asset classes. This is mostly because inflation-linked bonds have two values the original face value of the bond and the current value adjusted for inflation. The adjustments of principal are considered annual income for tax purposes. However, investors do not actually receive the adjustments in that year. Instead, they get the larger coupon payments and only receive inflation, augmented principal, when the bond matures. Thus, investors may be subject to tax on what's known as phantom income. The history of inflation, linked bonds, Inflation-linked bonds were developed during the American Revolution to combat inflation's corrosive effects on the real value of consumer goods. Massachusetts issued inflation-indexed bonds beginning in 1780, but inflation indexing seemed unnecessary for established countries on the gold standard. Most of the world had abandoned the gold standard by the 1970s, and rising inflation created new demand for inflation-linked bonds. In 1981, the UK began to issue the first modern inflation-linked bonds or linkers, as they are often called. Other countries followed suit, including Sweden, Canada, and Australia. The US Treasury did not issue inflation, indexed bonds until 1997, and India issued capital-indexed bonds that same year. However, India did not issue fully inflation-indexed bonds, which protect both coupons and principal from inflation, until 2013. The bottom line. Despite their complicated nature and potential downside in deflationary periods, inflation-linked bonds are still enormously popular. They are the most trusted investment vehicle to hedge against short-term inflation. The corrosive effect that inflation can have on returns is a strong motivating factor behind the popularity of these bonds. An additional upside of inflation-linked bonds is that the returns do not correlate with those of stocks or with other fixed income assets. Inflation-linked bonds are a hedge against inflation, and they also help to provide diversification in a balanced portfolio. Four basic things to know about bonds. Want to strengthen your portfolio's risk? Return profile? Adding bonds can create a more balanced portfolio by adding diversification and calming volatility. But the bond market may seem unfamiliar even to the most experienced investors. Many investors make only passing ventures into bonds because they are confused by the apparent complexity of the bond market and the terminology. In reality, bonds are very simple debt instruments. So how do you get into this part of the market? 
Get your start in bond investing by learning these basic bond market terms. Key takeaways. The bond market can help investors diversify beyond stocks. Some of the characteristics of bonds include their maturity, their coupon, interest rate, their tax status, and their calibility. Several types of risks associated with bonds include interest rate risk, credit default risk, and prepayment risk. Most bonds come with ratings that describe their investment grade. Bond definition. Basic bond characteristics. A bond is simply a loan taken out by a company. Instead of going to a bank, the company gets the money from investors who buy its bonds. In exchange for the capital, the company pays an interest coupon, which is the annual interest rate paid on a bond expressed as a percentage of the face value. The company pays the interest at predetermined intervals, usually annually or semi-annually, and returns the principal on the maturity date, ending the loan. Unlike stocks, bonds can vary significantly based on the terms of its indenture, a legal document outlining the characteristics of the bond. Because each bond issue is different, it is important to understand the precise terms before investing. In particular, there are six important features to look for when considering a bond. Bonds are a form of IU between the lender and the borrower. Maturity. This is the date when the principal or pair amount of the bond is paid to investors and the company's bond obligation ends. Therefore, it defines the lifetime of the bond. A bond's maturity is one of the primary considerations an investor weighs against their investment goals and horizon. Maturity is often classified in three ways. Short term. Bonds that fall into this category tend to mature within one to three years. Medium term. Maturity dates for these types of bonds are normally over 10 years. Long term. These bonds generally mature over longer periods of time. Secured, unsecured. A bond can be secured or unsecured. A secured bond pledges specific assets to bondholders if the company cannot repay the obligation. This asset is also called collateral on the loan. So if the bond issuer defaults, the asset is then transferred to the investor. A mortgage-backed security MZ is one type of secured bond backed by titles to the homes of the borrowers. Unsecured bonds, on the other hand, are not backed by any collateral. That means the interest and principal are only guaranteed by the issuing company. Also called debentures, these bonds return little of your investment if the company fails. As such, they are much riskier than secured bonds. Liquidation preference. When a firm goes bankrupt, it repays investors in a particular order as it liquidates. After a firm sells off all its assets, it begins to pay out its investors. Senior debt is debt that must be paid first, followed by junior subordinated debt. Stockholders get whatever is left. Coupon. The coupon amount represents interest paid to bondholders, normally annually or semi-annually. The coupon is also called the coupon rate or nominal yield. To calculate the coupon rate, divide the annual payments by the face value of the bond. Tax status. While the majority of corporate bonds are taxable investments, some government and municipal bonds are tax exempt, so income and capital gains are not subject to taxation. 1. Tax exempt bonds normally have lower interest than equivalent taxable bonds. An investor must calculate the tax equivalent yield to compare the return with that of taxable instruments. Calibility. Some bonds can be paid off by an issuer before maturity. If a bond has a call provision, it may be paid off at earlier dates, at the option of the company, usually at a slight premium to part. A company may choose to call its bonds if interest rates allow them to borrow at a better rate. Calibal bonds also appeal to investors as they offer better coupon rate. Risks of bonds. Bonds are a great way to earn income because they tend to be relatively safe investments. But just like any other investment, they do come with certain risks. Here are some of the most common risks with these investments. Interest rate risk. Interest rates share an inverse relationship with bonds. So when rates rise, bonds tend to fall and vice versa. Interest rate risk comes when rates change significantly from what the investor expected. If interest rates decline significantly, the investor faces the possibility of prepayment. If interest rates rise, the investor will be stuck with an instrument yielding below market rates. The greater the time to maturity, the greater the interest rate risk an investor bears because it is harder to predict market developments farther out into the future. Credit default risk. Credit or default risk is the risk that interest and principal payments due on the obligation will not be made as required. 
When an investor buys a bond, they expect that the issuer will make good on the interest and principal payments, just like any other creditor. When an investor looks into corporate bonds, they should weigh out the possibility that the company may default on the debt. Safety usually means the company has greater operating income and cash flow compared to its debt. If the inverse is true and the debt outweighs available cash, the investor may want to stay away. Prepayment risk. Prepayment risk is the risk that a given bond issue will be paid off earlier than expected, normally through a call provision. This can be bad news for investors because the company only has an incentive to repay the obligation early when interest rates have declined substantially. Instead of continuing to hold a high interest investment, investors are left to reinvest funds in a lower interest rate environment. Bond ratings. Most bonds come with a rating that outlines their quality of credit. That is, how strong the bond is and its ability to pay its principal and interest. Ratings are published and are used by investors and professionals to judge their worthiness. Agencies. The most commonly cited bond rating agencies are Standard Poor's, Moody's Investor Service, and Fitch Ratings. They rate a company's ability to repay its obligations. Ratings range from IA to AO for high-grade issues very likely to be repaid to D for issues that are currently in default. 2. Bonds rated Bobby to Baya or above are called investment grade. This means they are unlikely to default and tend to remain stable investments. Bonds rated Bayou to Bay or below are called junk bonds. Default is more likely, and they are more speculative and subject to price volatility. Firms will not have their bonds rated, in which case it is solely up to the investor to judge a firm's repayment ability. Because the rating systems differ for each agency and change from time to time, Research the rating definition for the bond issue you are considering definition for the bond issue you are considering. Bond yields. Bond yields are all measures of return. Yield to maturity is the measurement most often used. But it is important to understand several other yield measurements that are used in certain situations. Yield to maturity. ETM. As noted above, yield to maturity. ITM is the most commonly cited yield measurement. It measures what the return on a bond is if it is held to maturity and all coupons are reinvested at the IAM rate. Because it is unlikely that coupons will be reinvested at the same rate, an investor's actual return will differ slightly. Calculating ETIM by hand is a lengthy procedure, so it is best to use Excel's rate or yield mat functions, starting with Excel 2007. A simple function is also available on a financial calculator. Current Yield the current yield can be used to compare the interest income provided by a bond to the dividend income provided by a stock. This is calculated by dividing the bond's annual coupon by the bond's current price. Keep in mind, this yield incorporates only the income portion of the return, ignoring possible capital gains or losses. As such, this yield is most useful for investors concerned with current income only. Nominal Yield the nominal yield on a bond is simply the percentage of interest to be paid on the bond periodically. It is calculated by dividing the annual coupon payment by the par or face value of the bond. It is important to note that the nominal yield does not estimate return accurately unless the current bond price is the same as its par value. Therefore, nominal yield is used only for calculating other measures of return, yield to call, etc. A callable bond always bears some probability of being called before the maturity date. Investors will realize a slightly higher yield if the called bonds are paid off at a premium. An investor in such a bond may wish to know what yield will be realized if the bond is called at a particular call date to determine whether the prepayment risk is worthwhile. It is easiest to calculate the yield to call using Excel's yield or ear functions or with a financial calculator. Realized yield the realized yield of a bond should be calculated if an investor plans to hold a bond only for a certain period of time rather than to maturity. In this case, the investor will sell the bond and this projected future bond price must be estimated for the calculation. Because future prices are hard to predict, this yield measurement is only an estimation of return. This yield calculation is best performed using Excel's yield or ear functions or by using a financial calculator which is larger, the stock market or the bond market. The bond market is actually much larger than the stock market in terms of aggregate market value. What is the relationship between a bond's price and interest rates? Bond prices are inversely related to interest rate moves. So if interest rates go up, bond prices fall and vice versa. Are bonds risky investments? 
Bonds have historically been more conservative and less volatile than stocks, but there are still risks. For instance, there is credit risk that the bond issuer will default. There is also interest rate risk, where bond prices can fall if interest rates increase, rates increase. The bottom line. Although the bond market appears complex, it is really driven by the same risk-return trade-offs as the stock market. Once an investor masters these few basic terms and measurements to unmask the familiar market dynamics, they can become a competent bond investor. Once you've gotten a hang of the lingo, the rest is easy.